For some reason, they always put the organic stuff on the, the high top. shelves. Yeah. I don't know why they do that. I had had surgery and I was in a chair and I was going down a supermarket aisle and I just happened to look up and there's that window where they all have the staff room and there were people looking at me and I was like, oh, you know. I kept wheeling around and then all of a sudden this woman ran up to my mother and was like, what's your daughter's name? And mum was like, I'm not giving you my daughter's name. Who are you? And they were like, it's not anything bad. What's your oh, I love that. Name? It's not anything bad. I and then so mum was like, Christy. And then all of a sudden she ran off and then my name came over the intercom. And Christy Munro, please come up to the front desk, blah, 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 blah. And so it was like, oh, well, this is not embarrassing. So <laughs> here I wheel up to the front and they hand me a packet of biscuits that were off and a magnet that was a grater that made a noise. Right. And I don't even remember what they said. It was just like, good job for being out there. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> One day I was by myself and I didn't want to ask someone to pass something down. It was a feminine product. So I went to the next aisle and got a broom and normally I could flick things down and grab just one. I flicked it, the whole shelf came down and then people just cracked up laughing. But it wasn't in a nasty way. It was like, oh, I'm glad that wasn't me sitting in a sea of tampons. So, you know, the, it can bring a laugh too. It can bring a funny side. After my accident and I thought what am I going to do with my life mm. because what I'd done before my accident was managing restaurants and you just couldn't have done that from a wheelchair mm. and I was just like oh my god what am I going to do and when I started working I remember like being in um being in um a traffic jam and there were all these people like Ooh, like you know and I was just like I'm going to work <laughs> that's so cool earning my own money love being able to earn like go there every day and go I did this work, so this money's mine because I did, you know. And we like you earning your own money as well. We're quite right. fond of that. <laughs> it never came across to me that people would be surprised that I worked because it was, it was always going to be my end result. I was always going to work because I didn't want to live on a benefit for the rest of my life or be dependent on my parents. So that was just my natural goal. But the amount of shock I get that I'm genuinely working and I'm shock horror responsible for stuff... <laughs> It's just very surprising to people. Um, you know, you went to school, you went to uni, and then you got a job. That's yeah. always just what it was in my brain. Yeah. And then, you know, when I find out that it's 60% of people don't work with disabilities, that it was yeah. like, what? <laughs> when I go out, like, um, I notice that people don't actually say to me, um, oh, what do you do? Because that's kind of like the first thing people used to yeah, always ask yeah. me, and I used to be quite proud to say, what I did do in a, in a previous life, you know, um, I used to run like really top restaurants in London. I used to be, oh cool, mm. it's good, I like this question because it's, mm. it's a good thing that I do. And I'd be, I'd be really happy to tell people what I do now, but it's, it's kind of like I have to work yeah. in a way, work around a way to tell people what I do because people don't expect you to work. Yeah, and you're yeah. right actually because mm. I get asked that question mm. least too. Mm. What do you do? And when I say I'm a teacher, they go, oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, how does that work? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I remember going to a, um, a a party with a whole lot of bankers, and um, it was friends of mine, and he was a bank manager, and he invited me to a party with a whole lot of other bank managers, and they didn't know how to talk to me because they didn't like to ask me what I did for a living. And, and that was a really uh, important status for them, so they avoided me like the plague. And I didn't make an effort because I wanted to see the reaction. You know, I just sat back and just waited. To, and I, they didn't come near me because they didn't want to talk about what we did for a living. And I think people find it easier to associate with you if you look just like them. And in business, I've noticed it as well, that I think some people, without even realising it, find it a difficult concept that a young looking disabled woman who's sitting down lower than you can hold a power of a, a position of power in business and can have that intellect and that capability and so I do the dress for success a lot a lot of women I know do it but I think it's even more important for me to do that if you're particularly in a wheelchair I don't know about 
other impairments, but I know when you're in a wheelchair, if I stand in court, I'm treated with the same respect that other lawyers will treat each other. If I'm sitting down, I'm disrespected immediately. I just think that there's definitely a misconception out there that employers see the things that we can't do, and what they don't realise is that you know, every day we're having to work stuff out on how to just to get through life. So our problem solving skills and our ability to adapt to new things is, you know, those skills are really high um, and strong. So as a, an employee, I think, you know, we're, we're great candidates. Jesus, you're heavy. <laughs> a hundred times a day, you're thinking outside the square. That is not something you can be taught, mm. you know. That comes from every day, thinking, planning, negotiating, um, every mm. set of circumstances you go into. Um, it definitely does give you a different perspective on things. Um, but how do you, I don't know, I haven't quite figured out how you can prove that to, to a potential employer. Start at the bottom, mate. You've been making cups of teas first. I think there's pressure there to sort of, to, to justify your, I think, I guess for me, particularly because I don't have a job at the moment, I'm kind of interning, you know, I guess there's a pressure for anybody is to really, really stake your claim. And you've never doubted about the fact you need qualifications, have you? No. Because, I mean, the idea is that if she gets... Well, when you get your degree, that that will mean that you're... Yeah. You can um, kind of, yeah, go into the skilled workforce rather than the unskilled workforce, which yeah. requires people to do things with their hands. I mean, you know, we've all got the ability. Sometimes we've got to get those A's just to be looked at. And sometimes we aren't even looked at at that level. So we do have to work twice as hard. But at the same time, it develops our ethic for working. Um, yeah, it just makes me feel worthy. I feel like I've got a reason to get up in the morning. Like, and in between jobs, when I, when I was looking for jobs and didn't have any, or between uni and then getting a job, and I wasn't getting any. I was just like, oh, my God, will someone please hire me? Because you go into interview after interview after interview. And they go, oh, wheelchair, no. Nope. You're looking for a job now, aren't you? Actually, I would say it would be other people, and I think it's perception. I think it's just um, having other people able... It, mm. Altogether, if people could actually learn more empathy for each other. People just accepting me for who I am. And I wouldn't mind being a bit taller, but I can't help it. Oh, well. But, yeah. Well, I used to be taller and I'm shrinking. I can tell you it's not all it's cracked <laughs> up to be, really. But yeah. that's interesting because as soon as you asked that question, the word that came into my head was the very word you used. What? Acceptance. Yeah. I... You know, living with a sight impairment has made my life incredibly complex and I think at times... Oh, well, not I think. It's been deeply challenging. <laughs> there are things that have been deeply challenging. Um, and yet, at having reached this sort of stage of my life, I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm really starting to value that richness of experience, deeply and honestly value it. There's nothing I want, I want to change. Because I don't want to think about, you know, you, you think, you know, if I start thinking about, you know, why did, why, why did it happen to me, uh, and then think about, what would I change now? Well, you know, there's, it just eats away at you. So I, I just don't want to change anything in my life. I, I mean, I don't want to trade it in, in for a younger model at all, or, you know, I keep threatening to a Russian. I need a big Russian girl who can lift me a bit more. Yeah, I don't... That's too hard a question. It's, it's a really hard question. One thing I could change, well... I, I'd have to think about it for a minute. <laughs>
If all those assumptions disappeared and people were more aware and more informed about everything, that'd be great. <laughs> If there was one thing I could change, it would be society around me understanding that it's not the same all the time, that some things are more easy to understand, and I think people have an easier time with an SCI or blind or hearing impaired. I think people are still having a harder time getting to terms with a multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy thing where you can see someone and they're even walking one day and the next day they're lying in bed half dead. It's, it's not a static thing and it's progressive. So how you view yourself needs to change and how everyone else needs to view you needs to change. There's a huge section of society here that, that I think would be really sort of well advised to, to, to yeah, join forces, I guess, and, and work towards change. And I don't think we're particularly good at that. It's back to the dating thing. I, I, I'd like women to, to be able, and men, because it's not just, I mean, not for, I mean, I was talking about me, but in general, women and men, not to look at a person for, for what they look like, but who they are, and actually we stop being superficial about it and actually start to understand the person and actually get to know the person so that, you know, I think it'd be, we'd all have a richer life. I mean, it'd be really nice to think that people share their lives, not just because of the way they look, but, but because, you know, they've got so much to offer each other. At least be prepared to support one another and really um, engage. And I don't think we do, we're particularly good at that at the moment. So I think if I could change one thing, it would just be to really, you know, stick a piece of dynamite under our collective asses and, and, and get things moving. Because I think, you know, we, there's, yeah, we could, we could do a lot more than we are at the moment. change if there was one thing that I could have I'd love to have one hand just one hand on this side yeah. what would you do with that hand <laughs> <laughs> I would I would Curtis Palmer I would hold a girl's hand with it our crews have been to Nelson Talpo and even Papua New Guinea filming stories for our new season but next week we continue with our series the truth about disability this one is very revealing you don't want to miss it Yeah. Relationships? Oh, look. That's problematic. <laughs> <laughs> Disability yeah. and sex. Oh. How does that work? Do they do that? <laughs> we just live in ordinary lives, no? We're just doing what every young guy kind of does. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.